Here we see the wave function solution for the free particle psi equals e to the i kx, where k is equal to 1. Notice that the real part of the wave function is in blue and the imaginary part is in orange. This wave function solution corresponds to a particle with a momentum of h bar. Here is a graph of the wave function solution e to the i k x, where k is equal to minus 1. This corresponds to a particle with a momentum of minus h bar. Here in blue is the wave function solution psi equals e to the i k x, where k is equal to 0. Notice that it's an entirely a real function with no imaginary part. This would be a particle with a momentum exactly equal to 0 and a momentum exactly equal to 0. Here is the free particle wave function e to the i k x where k is equal to 2. The real part is shown in blue and the imaginary part of the wave function is shown in red. Notice that since k is equal to 2, this particle has twice the momentum, 2 h bar, as the particle where k was equal to 1. The wavelength is the distance necessary for the wave function to complete one full cycle. This wavelength, lambda, is related to k in the following way. Lambda is equal to 2 pi divided by k. So, as k becomes larger, the wavelength becomes shorter. Here we illustrate one wavelength for the wave function where k is equal to 2. This wave function corresponds to a particle where the quantum number k is equal to 5. The real part of the wave function is shown in blue and the imaginary part is shown in red. Eigenfunctions of an operator with different eigenvalues are orthogonal. The function psi1 e to the i x has eigenvalue h bar for momentum and psi 2 e to the 2 i x has the eigenvalue 2 h bar. This graph illustrates the real parts of all those functions. The real part of psi 1 e to the i x is in blue. The real part of e to the 2 i x is in red and the product psi 2 star psi 1 is shown in yellow. The integral of psi 2 star psi 1 d tau can be linked to the area under the curve, which is yellow in the graph. Note that areas above the x-axis are considered to be positive areas, whereas the areas below the x-axis are considered negative. Note that for the light gray regions, which are of exactly the same shape, that the positive areas are exactly counterbalanced by an equal and opposite negative area. Also note that the two positive dark gray regions are exactly mirrored by the negative areas of the dark gray region below the x-axis in the center of the graph. Therefore, the integral is equal to zero. Here we have the wave function solution e to the i kx plus e to the minus i kx 
where each of the functions has the coefficient of 1. Note that the resulting linear combination forms an entirely real function. This free particle wave function is a general linear combination c1 e to the i k x plus c2 e to the minus i k x where c1 is equal to 1 and c2 is equal to 3. The real part of the wave function is shown in green. The imaginary part is shown in orange. Here is the probability density function for the wave function e to the i k x plus e to the minus i k x. The regions where the probability drops to zero are called nodes. There are also the areas where the wave function crosses through zero. Here we show the probability density function for the linear combination of three eigenfunctions, e to the i k x, e to the 2 i x, and e to the 3 i x. Note that by adjusting the coefficients, we can begin to localize the particle. As the momentum, which depends upon k, becomes more indeterminate, the position, the x coordinate, becomes more definitive. Thank you much for your attention. Have a good one.